Hi, this is Bruce, the accounting guy again, and we're here to go over financial statements. There's three basic financial statements that you're going to need to learn. You do need to memorize them. Uh, they are going to be the income statement, the statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to use as a starting point the transaction analysis worksheet that we used earlier in the previous video. And on this transaction analysis worksheet, you can see, um, and, and again, this is very similar to what's in your textbook, you can see the transactions. You can see that the assets do equal the liabilities plus owner's equity, and we can see all the transactions that, that increased and decreased owner's equity. What we're going to do today is relate these numbers to the three financial statements we need to know. Now, when we do our financial statements, there are three, and I want you to do them in the following order. I want you to do the income statement first. And the income statement is for a period of time. If we look at this income statement, we always have the name of the company first, we have the name of the statement, and then we have for the period of time. So in this case, it says for the month ended September 30th, 2008. If it was for a nine-month period, it would say for the nine months ended September 30th, 2008. And if this was the year end for 12 months, it would just say for the year ended September 30th, 2008. But for every statement that we do, no matter what it, what it is, it's the name of the statement, then which statement it is, and the, in this case, the period of time. Now, an income statement is exactly what it says it is. It is showing income and it's showing expenses. So what we will do is, is we will list out the income and the expenses on the income statement. The first thing we'll show are revenues and the second are expenses. Now, where do we get them from? Well, we got them from our worksheet. If we come back over here on our worksheet and go down the owner's equity, owner's equity column, we'll see that we have labeled all of the items that are here. And that was the importance of labeling so that we can find our revenues, anything with the word revenue, and anything with the word expense. Notice that the first and the last item here on this statement do not say the word revenue and do not say the word expense, so they're excluded because these are personal items of the owner. The investment was where the owner put money in, and the drawing was where the owner took money out. But all the items in between say revenues and expenses. If we examine them, we'll see we had two revenues, here of $1,200 and here of $35. Add them together, we'll have $4,700 worth of revenue, and those are our revenues. Of course, we have the individual expenses here of advertising, of rent, of salaries, and of utilities. So you can see why we didn't just say expenses, $1,700 here, but rather what we did was we classified each one. That's important as we bring these numbers now over to the income statement. We always start our statement out with the word revenue. We'll put it next to an imaginary margin. And then we'll come down and we'll start listing out our revenue. In this case, we just have service revenue. If we had more than one type of revenue, we'd list service revenue, parts revenue, um, if we had parts revenue also separately. And we take the service revenue number all the way out to the right, and we showed it again. As I already showed you how we got the $4,700. And the first number in every column always gets a dollar sign. So don't forget to put that dollar sign there. Once we're done showing our revenue, we'll come back over here. We'll start listing out our expenses. Now, expenses, we, we write the word expenses, we indent a little bit, and then we start listing them out. You can list expenses out in a number of ways. Notice that these expenses are shown in numerical order, from largest to smallest. Some companies will show them in that fashion. Other companies will show them in alphabetical order, where they would have put advertising first, then they would have put the rent, the salaries, and, of course, utilities last. Um, we always come over one column to the left. We don't put our expenses directly under here because we want to keep our expenses to the left so that we can show the detail of them. Again, putting a dollar sign in front of the first one, and then we draw a line underneath the column to show we're going to do a mathematical process. We're either going to add or subtract, and in this case, we're going to, of course, add them all. When we add them up, we then come over with their total of $1,950 and bring them underneath the revenue total. And notice then we've indented and put total expenses and brought that total over. We now have our service revenue. We now have our total expenses. We draw a line underneath to show we're going to do another mathematical process. 
And this time that mathematical process, of course, is going to be to subtract our expenses from our revenue, just like you would in your checkbook. And, and again, we'd come up with a total, and that's called our net income, just like it would be like a net paycheck. You'd have your gross paycheck, less all your deductions, and then you'd have your your net pay, so this would be our net income after our expenses. Since it's the last number in the column, it's the last number in the statement, we show it again with a dollar sign, and this time the final number is always double underscored. And again, the importance of the income statement is to show revenues versus the expenses. <clears throat> again, we'll see where this $2,750 number comes in to importance in just a second. <clears throat> so that's our first statement. Our second statement is our statement of owner's equity statement. Again, the name of the company, the name of the statement, and then for the same period of time that our income statement was, because it covers the same period of time. And what we do to start out is we always write the name of the person in the word capital. In this case, we said it was R. Neal, so we'd write R. Neal capital, and we'd put the beginning date of that period. Since it's for a month, it's September 1st. Notice that we come all the way to the right, we put a dollar sign in front of the number in the beginning of the column, and it's a zero because we just started out this business and there was nothing in the business. Now what we do is, is the next thing we do is we add, and two things can make as we said, this is the owner's equity statement. That owner's equity statement really is very similar to this owner's equity column right here. What we're going to do is, is we're really taking all the numbers in this column and we're going to condense them and put them into a more readable form uh, for the business community, and that's in this owner's equity statement right here. Notice it's 16450 down here, and even in this final number on our statement here, it's still 16450 So all we're doing is condensing it. We had nothing at the beginning. Notice we put add. Two things make income go up. We already learn. I mean, make the owner's equity statement go up. We learn that the two things that make it go up are investments and net income. Notice there's the owner's 15000 Sure enough, if we look all the way back over here, here's the $15,000 that they did surely put in. So we come back and we bring in here. We keep it to the left because we're going to form a couple numbers and then we'll show the detail and bring the total over into this column. The other thing that makes owner's equity go up, of course, is revenue, yet expenses make it go down. But rather than taking, all, taking this statement and showing the revenue and the expenses, we condense it into this one number and say add net income. So that's what we're doing. So this number, 2750 has all the revenue and all the expenses condensed together into one number to write there. And that is, again, very useful in that we're making the statement a little smaller, a little easier to read. We draw a line underneath, and again, we total them up and bring the total over. Again, notice I have a dollar sign in front of the 15 because it was also the first number in the column. I draw a line under this because I'm going to add these two together, and I added what I had at the beginning plus what we increased the capital account by, the owner's equity account by, and now we have a subtotal. So we don't have to title on anything because there's one other possible thing that, of course, can make owner's equity go down, and that is the drawings. If we come back to this owner's equity column, we can look over here, and we can see, sure enough, owner's equity went down by 13, and that's where that number came from. So we come back over here, and we go less drawings. Some people like to use the word subtract. Less drawings, 1,300. I do not have to show it as a negative number. I do not have to put brackets around it because this is telling me over here that we are subtracting it with the word less. I draw a line underneath again to show a mathematical equation is going to, process is going to happen. I subtract this from that. I come up with my final number. I put a dollar sign in front of it, a double underscore. And again, it's our Neal Capital at the closing date of September 30th. So we've now done our first two statements. The only statement we have left to do is the balance sheet. Now, when it comes to Soft Bytes balance sheet, again, name of the company, the type of um, statement it is. And this time, the balance sheet is not for a period of time. It's a snapshot in time. It's only for a particular date. So it's always the last date, September 30th, 2008. And what the balance sheet is, if we can come back to this worksheet again, it is the general accounting equation put <clears throat> into a format that the business community finds acceptable. That balance sheet is nothing more than assets equals liabilities plus owners 
equity. Notice that's what it is here. We have cash of 8050, accounts receivable of 1400, supplies of 1600, and equipment of 7000. Notice that's what they put here. They listed assets in the middle, and they listed those four right down in a row, and listed out those four dollar amounts. And of course, they draw a line underneath to show they're going to do that mathematical process. They total it out, double underscore it, and put a dollar sign. And notice this 18,050 is the same 18,050 we have on our worksheet up over here. Um, the one thing I will tell you, we're going to get a little bit ahead of the game, but there is a specific order that these assets are listed in. And you'll read about them in Chapter 3, but I want to tell you real quick about them now, and that's called order of liquidity, which means nearness to cash. Which item can be turn, turned into cash the quickest? Cash, of course, is already cash, so it's shown first. Accounts receivable is money due to you from your customers. Hopefully, you'll collect that fairly quickly. Then your supplies, though your supplies, I would imagine you're really not going to try to turn into cash, but you get a use out of them very quickly. And then, of course, the last item that would be the hardest to sell and get rid of would be your equipment. So we always list assets in order of liquidity. Once we've lifted out our assets, the other side of the equation is what? Up here, liabilities plus owner's equity. So we come under and we list liabilities and owner's equity in the middle, and then we list out the word liability, notice accounts payable. There's the dollar amount. Since it's the beginning of a new, a new total, we show a dollar sign in front of it. If we had a notes payable also, we'd list that right underneath it with its total. Then we put the owner's equity section, and we always write the name's person, R. Neal Capital. What is his capital total? We don't have to show all the different numbers. Coming back up to this statement, here's owner's equity. There it is, 16,450. So you can see how this ties in. This number's needed down here. And when we add our liabilities plus our owner's equity, there's that final line again to show we're going to do a mathematical process. We add them together since it's the final number, dollar sign, double underscore, and we title it appropriately, total liabilities and owner's equity. And of course, it's a balance sheet because the two columns balance how ingenious accountants are for a title such as that. Anyway, that's what I needed you to get out of this today. You, yes, you do need to memorize how to do these. They will be on the first exam without a shadow of a doubt, so make sure you memorize them. And that's all I have for you today on this. That's Bruce the Accounting Guy, and I'm coming back at you real soon. Bye now.